What's good? Welcome back to another episode of Where the Money. We are on episode 30, and you know we're keeping it rocking and rolling. You know we locked in on cryptocurrency right now, so let's get right into it. Today, we're going to talk about a little bit of Bitcoin and do some technical analysis on it. We're going to talk about our favorite subject on this show, scams, crypto scams, financial scams, all that. And then we're going to get into the little bit of news about Solana and where we're looking forward in the future for this asset class. So let me share my screen and let's get right into it. Uh, we have Bitcoin sitting at around 25700 Ethereum sitting at around sixteen hundred and BNB sitting at around two hundred and fifteen dollars. The price hasn't done much lately. Uh, we were traced from that large pump that we had from twenty five, twenty six thousand to twenty seven thousand seven hundred. But we are in a very, very tight range. So let's discuss that really quickly. The range we're in is basically between twenty five thousand three hundred and 26,800. And it's looking like this is going to stay here and the price is getting pretty tight. As you see, we've come uh below the 200 day EMA. And we look like we may sit there for a while because once we get under it, we're really under it and once we're over it, we're really over it. So we just have to see what's going on within the uh, local time. I believe we're going to stay under it, but who's to say what's going to happen? But if we go to the weekly, we have not made our way under the 200 week EMA. But if we're going to look at some indicators, let's look at the MACD. Um, let's zoom out a little bit. As far as momentum, it looks like the MACD is showing us that we have more minimum momentum down to go. So we possibly could get under this 200 week EMA. Let's zoom in on the MACD a little bit. Uh, we teetered on downward momentum, then we went upward momentum a little bit, but it's looking like it's going to solidify itself on the downward momentum. And if we look at the RSI, we're kind of in the middle, more towards the overbought range. So we, it looks like we may have more area to go down. Uh, it's looking like it'll be one of those situations where it stays on the center line, but we could go down to the oversold level. But let's just see. And let's just check both of these momentum indicators on the monthly as well while we're here. Uh, right in the middle uh, as far as the RSI on the monthly. So who knows where we'll go. Let's check out the MACD on the monthly. Uh, shoot, it's not really definite either way. Uh, it looks like we're coming fresh off of some uh, downward momentum, but it looks like it may be upward momentum uh, time to really get going. Now, I heard somebody talk about uh, divergences, and that'll be the next step that I get into as far as momentums. Um, they noticed upward momentum, but they have a strong feeling that we're going to be bearish. And me personally, I feel like we have more time uh, for some downward pressure to be bearish, but we'll see. But as far as price action, that's what it is. Nothing really exciting going on. And we probably have a long way to go as far as longer in the bear market, as far as longer in the crab market. But who knows? Some new news could come out and we could take off. But let's get into the news articles today because we got ourselves another scam. Rockland resident accused in $1.5 million cryptocurrency scam. So this is a very, very short order article. So I'm going to just read the, the first part and we'll get into it. And let's talk about some thoughts about it. A Paramount resident is accused of lying to investors about being a licensed broker with expertise in cryptocurrency in order to steal money to finance a lavish lifestyle. Uh, Jeffrey T, 26 years old, faces federal charges of wire fraud, which carry a, a maximum sentence of 20 years in prison. As alleged, Jeffrey T perpetrated a classic investment fraud, investment fraud lying to victims about his qualifications to lure in more money. Uh, not verbatim. Uh, so he lied about being a Series 3 and a Series 7 broker in New York, New Jersey, and Florida. So what happened? Young Cat, 26, lied to some people, probably socially engineered his way into it just through conversations and got people to invest in him and claim he was an expert in cryptocurrency and took the money, uh, imagine, uh, managed to get $1.5 million and looks like he spent it on lavish lifestyles and didn't really invest any of it. Um, this is what goes on in cryptocurrency. And this is not just cryptocurrency. Like he uh, said he was going to invest in the stock market and cryptocurrency. So this happens in all sectors of finance. And you have to be aware and you can't just take people's word for it. You need some type of proof. You need if, if you're going to do this stuff and none of this is financial advice. But if you're going to invest in somebody or something, you need to do your due diligence and research, scrutinize, probably have a lawyer to go through some things to get actual proof that you may not be able to understand or obtain yourself. Uh, he, he routinely made false and oral statements. So he was just a liar. 
So he probably talked these people out of getting their money and spent it on Lambos, trips, all type of stuff, man. But this is what goes on. And this is a young guy. So, you know what I'm saying? Be be careful of this. And shoot, th th this is happening right now in a very, very low point in the market. When more money is flooding in and everybody's talking about cryptocurrency, it's going to get worse. But let's talk about something. Um, remember, we talked about an individual, an older gentleman who lost $300,000 in a scam by somebody randomly sending them a message on social media. So let's talk about more of that. Um, what to know about a pig butchering scam. That's what's called pig butchering. Um, an individual from the Better Business Bureau is going to explain it and we're gonna talk about it. As soon as this ad is over with, I tried to stall to get through it, but this is a long ad. Now, we're not going to watch the whole thing. We're going to just watch about roughly 30 seconds of it, and then we'll discuss our thoughts. Very uh, apropos. Uh, it alludes to the practice of fattening up a hog before slaughter. Crooks usually make contact with the victim on a dating or social media app, maybe some seemingly mistaken contact. After they establish contact, some sort of relationship, uh, they turn the uh, conversation to the crook's success investing in cryptocurrency. Uh, they even may show the victim a phony website for a brokerage firm that shows the crooks uh, great returns from investing in cryptocurrency. Never really any hard sell. Or so what he's saying is, what is pig butchering? It talks about fattening a pig before the slaughter. And that's what they're doing with these investments. He mentioned people reaching out to you on social media or dating platforms. People who are investors, who are professionals, they're not going to reach out to you. You know, they have in firms and you go to them and ask them, what does your firm do? They're not going to reach out to you. If anybody's reaching out to you on some money stuff, they're probably hurt. But they, they'll set up phony websites. They, they won't request you for money, but this is called social engineering. So social engineering is when, you know, they don't use hardware or they, they just talk their way into your life. So let's say you're on Instagram and you get a, a, a DM talking about, hey, I make these, I've made 100,000% return gains with this cryptocurrency. That's social engineering. And it, this is very important because we're always on social media. Most people have multiple social medias and we're always interacting with the internet. So pretty much interacting with people on the internet is kind of the same thing as interacting with people in real life at this point. So you have to be very careful. And this happens to people of all ages because they mention it happens on social dating sites and websites. But it, the, the main people who will really, really fall for this are the older generation who are not used to interacting on social media and may not be able to tell the difference between a phony person and a real person. But this ha this can happen to a 15-year-old. A 15-year-old can be on social media and uh, an older person that, that may message them and say, man, I turned $100 into $1,000. Like, Young kids are gullible, and that happens at any age, 20, 30, 40, you can get got. So you need to watch out for this stuff because this is what's going on in uh, cryptocurrency, real estate, stocks. People always want to make money, and if they find a way that they can do it easily, that makes them the perfect victim. So we talked about the young kid who lied and said he was an investor and scam people. And then we talked about pig butchering. Go back to my older video where I talked about a man that lost 300 plus thousand due to a social scam. But let's get into the last part. And let's talk about uh, Solana. Uh, Visa promises faster credit card payments with USDC on Solana. So what did we talk about in prior episodes? Stable coins. Stable coins are the hot product inside of cryptocurrency that businesses are getting into. And there's a million different products. I'm not shilling Solana because I'm 100% transparent. I do own Solana. And if you go to my portfolio video, you can see how much of my portfolio is Solana. But to the point, uh, Payment Giant Visa today said it was expanding its crypto ambitions, this time by using stablecoin USDC on the Solana blockchain. And here's a video discussing it, uh, PBN Network. Uh, he'll talk about and show the architecture of how Solana is getting into it with USDC. And then I'm going to talk about the importance of why we need to pay attention to it. Not necessarily this project, but the architecture of it. We'll talk about it here in a second. Here was Kai Sheffield, who's the one of the Visa guys over there that's really breaking it down. One of the things that they showcase here says still early days, but Visa has already settled millions of dollars in USDC. We talked about that earlier, but this is kind of the framework of what it looks like. And when you look at this, 
It goes out from the consumer in through the issuer, typical. You'll notice over there on the left side, you've got bank wire, which is typically the route that it's going, which costs money. And then you've got Ethereum and Solana that now starts to reduce that infrastructure cost in both in and out, which goes over to the acquirer. So, so check this out. One thing I suggest you start to look into a little bit more is how payments work. Not you don't have to go into a deep dive. Just what happens when you go somewhere, you buy something, and you swipe your card. You it, there's normally several parties involved. Let's say it's Mastercard. You sw like you, like your your money from your bank account doesn't go straight into the the gas station's bank account. Like there's an issue with Mastercard and there's third parties involved. Long story short, this is kind of what it looks like, and this is the traditional way through bank wire. So. When you understand how transactions work and how financial systems work, it gives you a better idea of where these companies lie in the process. And it shows you where the value lies of these blockchains, of these projects, of whatever they're trying to sell. So once you're able to envision this a little better, you can say, oh, this is the benefit of an Ethereum, Solana, Ripple, Bitcoin, any other project that's out there. None of this is financial advice. But we'll just end that on some good news, some positive news. Some people are still building. Some people are still doing good things. And, you know, there's not much to talk about in the space. So let's just keep having fun. Let's talk about some technical analysis. And let's take our time and execute a real plan. I appreciate y'all for rocking with me. And I'm going to holler at y'all.